What has been beautiful as an experience, as my experience with that exhibition, is that unless it's not as usual you going around the works of art or just backing off to see better the painting, quite to the country, it's very much about you swirling around, avoiding the, the, the movement that comes to you. And thus this choreography, this movement that is embedded naturally within the uh, movement that we all have whenever we come to space is really, um, in, I would say, intensified by the very construct of the exhibition. We knew what we did not want to have rather than we knew what was going to happen. And one of the caveats I was really trying to avoid was that exhibition would be a suite of performances that would happen at 10.30 or at 3.30, at 4. Thus came the very important work that Jennifer Lacey proposed to the exhibition. Jennifer Lacey, the American choreographer based in Paris, decided to work the entire transitions between each of the work that constitute the exhibition. And in doing so, she really creates the gel, the unity that really led me and allows me and allows us to experience an exhibition of 10 hours and not a fragment of a suite of performances. Uh, the piece that I made for this, um, it's called Transmania Stan, and it's a system, and a, a system, it's kind of like the fascia of the piece, of the thing, you know, the connective tissue in a body. It's a series of transitions. Um, different, there's a 15, 16 different small things that can go in between everyone else's pieces. And they're also made to address the needs of people who are in a room doing something for five to 10 hours a day, like peeing and eating <laughs> and resting and calling the babysitter. So making something that doesn't exactly look like that, but allows them to do those things that they need to do. Well, rather than ephemeral, it's an exhibition of time. And it has always been my belief that exhibitions are only made and constructed of time. And that space is very much secondary to that, linked but secondary. And thus what happens here is really very much you do an experience, an experimentation as a spectator of moments of time that unveil in front of you. And, uh, and of course, the ephemerality of the movement is the core and the basis of all these works. But now, and again, maybe to come back to the etymology of the word, choreography, which is the writing of movement. Some pieces can only happen in there until I guess maybe somebody breaks a rule, but uh, because performers break rules, it's okay. Some pieces should happen in that room. Um, Cecilia, for example, has like a parcours where it does definitely leave the building and come back. And there's a number of them that have no stipulation. They can be anywhere. And it will change over the month. You know, I think right now they're, do, they're in a listening, like what kind of space can we take up with audience? And in a month it will be very different. The exhibition raised many more questions than answered. And together with Manuel Segade, what we looked into that, um, the origin of that book, and expressed the desire to do an entire translation of that publication, entitled Choreographing Exhibitions, which is very much a manifest, as in a new way or a renewed way to make exhibition, but also an anthology trying to contextualize not so much the exhibition, but the possibilities of choreographing exhibitions in, as seen through five prisms. 